Okay, so we have four from the start of school we are making their pitch. And at the end of that, we will declare the winner is, as Richie has said, we will need to grab this. Uh, so we have five minutes each. We will start with Hoja. Put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. My name is Timeji Falano, uh, the co-founder of Hoja. Uh, last year, uh, when we moved from uh, an office to another office, uh, when we were working on a previous uh, startup, uh, we realized that uh, it was so difficult for us to get good foods around. And uh, we tried some places on, online. We saw some people that are doing uh, food delivery already, but they were not available in the lorry. And also, we realized that the, the products were not actually very close to us. So we realized that uh, getting good food is actually very difficult. So we sat down and we asked uh, CIO called me and said, Dimitri, can we just come up with something to just uh, like a hub that can actually connect good uh, busy people to good foods around? Uh, something like a street to street uh, sales opportunity for uh, food vendors around. And uh, we did that research, we realized that there are a lot of competitors on brand already, but we just had to have something new. So I have a chance to present to you today. But what are we doing different, differently from other people that are in the market? Uh, people like Eno Food, uh, Lagos Food Panda in India. So we've been able to work around three major things, which number one is proximity in purchase. What we mean by proximity in purchase is that uh, Ocha knows where you are as a user and he knows where the seller are and uh, it, it, it connects the two of you together using GPS to calculate the number of distance from, uh, of the seller uh, to your place. So you'll be able to know the nearest plate of rice and then you'll be able to know the, the nearest basket of tomato very close to your place. And number two, we have deeper delivery density because the sellers and the buyers, they actually uh, live in, in a particular uh, locality. For example, maybe in most cases, maybe two kilometers away or one kilometer away. So that actually gives the seller opportunity to even if possible track down to deliver the food. So when we started this, we were able to have a seller that delivered the meal within 12 minutes in the lorry. And the third thing that we're working on, which is very, very important, is trust and, and, and convenience. Uh, we are working on trust, and uh, that's why we have been able to say, okay, every food that I uploaded from uh, on Hoja should be uploaded through the mobile app, and the picture should be taken directly from the mobile, uh, mobile phone directly online. Not necessarily, you don't need, we, we don't encourage people to Photoshop pictures of foods before they upload. And also the same thing is that we have, we have integrated uh, the map system to actually know the locations of the food sellers around you. So that you'll we'll be able to track fraud through this. And uh, next slide, we'll be able to track fraud through this. And uh, our market, now we, we uh, there was a time that KPMG talked about uh, the fact that market, uh, the food market in Nigeria and uh, in, in Africa, actually, that is actually the major area in which people spend their money. So it has dominated uh, the spending culture of Africa. And World Bank actually uh, has actually calculated the food size, the market size of food in Africa to be three hundred and thirteen billion dollar currently, with a, with a, you know with the potential to move to one trillion dollar by twenty thirty. So that's the market in which we are operating. But we are focusing on the busy people alone. We notice that some people actually actually go to restaurant or go to market to buy food, but we are focusing on busy people like us alone. The next slide and uh, next slide. And our audience, we are targeting uh, uh, about 200 million population between the age of 18 and 50, uh, 50 in Africa, or starting from Nigeria. And uh, we are working to get working class and middle class, these people that are busy. We are not targeting everybody. We are just targeting a very small portion of, uh, of the population that are very, very busy, that they don't have time to go and kill and buy their foods or to go to market during the weekend. And also, uh, we have some tractions. The product was soft launch in the Lorry Hand Lagos uh, about four months ago. And we've been able to have 1,000 plus users, 200 vendors uh, uh, in Lagos, Jos, uh, Abuja, uh, and very soon we will still localize in Portugal. But go back to the traction. Now, uh, soft layer by IBM has given us a catalyst program of 12,000 US dollars in hosting. And also, Facebook starts startup program from Facebook. They have given us $20,000 worth of uh, development. Uh, Product, uh, products like Pass and Co. And also, July 31, we were invited to Hong Kong by Rice Conference to exhibit Oja, which is actually, it was actually the first and the only African product that was exhibited in Hong Kong in July. Next. Then our milestone, we are not saying we are paying yet. We are still working to integrate our payments integration to have a freemium package fully 
fully fully de de delivered to the to the to the sellers on the paid platform. Uh, we are working on a mobile app, mobile web version of the app. It's actually or, or only available on Android for now, but we are working on the mobile version of the web, which is 75 percent ready, and we are fixing bugs. And the next thing we want to do is to localize in South South. The Niger Delta area. We are talking to Samuel in Benin, and we are I'm talking to Kevin here in Port Harcourt, so that after this program, we can see how we can localize uh, Port Harcourt. That's an area of operation. Then our revenue strategy, Oja is delivered on premium, on premium package. Uh, every seller that registers gets ten ten dollar credit to sell, and when they sell, we deduct thirty percent of every transaction. By the time they finish ten percent at the ten dollar, they'll be able to. Uh, uh, put in their money to sell more and also we want to feed adverse based on user impression by the time people make use of sale they make use of OJA uh, there's a way we track the way people are using OJA, or OJA where they use it and everything they will use that one to place our hearts uh, in their front next thing. and uh, we are on a seat run on uh, Angelist and Chrome base we are raising more than 20,000 US dollars to scale the service of OJA to 40, 45,000 users and also to have 15,000 monthly orders by December 2016. And which, the money we are raising, 55% of it will go into sales and marketing, 24% will go into salary, uh, salary of, the, of the employees and, uh, and the training. And we have 7% going into hosting packages and tools. Then we have another 7% for conferences like this and exhibition. Then we have the last 70%, uh, 7 to run our office and to have miscellaneous. Now we have a team. A team, uh, David is the CIO, he has worked to manage and train about nine engineers over the three, three years in our last startups. And Dari uh, Adebayo has actually worked on, uh, on our previous startup. Uh, he has brought secondly 70% of our, of our clients on the previous startup. And Elias Abalo is the WIPO certified legal IP portfolio manager. And Nathan is an advisor, he's a US based guy who has started coding from age nine. So we have a team that can actually drive this idea. Next slide. We have that's a team that can actually drive this idea. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that's Puja. Try to count all that into five minutes. Uh, next up, I think I like the name. I don't know why Uchi has a problem. It sounds very Germanic though. Let's make welcome Rod Sigins. Precious Patrol, CEO of Fruit Cities Foods. I'm an engineer and project manager by training. Who does not like uh, native soup here? You don't. Very few. What are the components of native soup? We all know it's primary coal, it's um, uh, popularly called it's um, we have oysters in Bay and stuff like that. But unfortunately, if you leave this shop, you go to be Lagos as populated as Lagos, go to the uh, northern areas, you cannot even see good native soup to eat. Why? Because they hardly see this, uh, uh, our seafood. Come over to Port Harcourt here. All over the streets, all over the marketplace, we see these things there, begging for people to buy. But if you dash across even to the next shop, a grocery shop or fruit food seller, you can't even find it to buy, except you go to the market. Next slide. Bruce Hitches now has a solution. Next slide. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Ritz, which is packaged, freshly packaged seafood. As you can see there, we have them in oysters, we have the Borewinko, we have, this thing is packaged, no addictive, no preservatives, in its natural state. Next, next slide. To get across to millions of Nigerians, we have decided to use different channels, the, the major distributors, the uh, grocery, big grocery stores, the packed and uh, frozen food sellers, big time supermarkets. Next slide. And compared to what you buy in the market, look at the companies in there. Filthy hands, dirty environment. With this, with the value added still, we don't even uh, uh, charge an extra. We still give you the same price that you buy from the market. Next slide. We have been collaborating with big time stores. As you can see, we have been in touch with Spa, with ShopRite, and as the case may be, uh, whoever that is interested, you can still come forward. We'll still collaborate with you to see how we can reach millions of Nigeria. Next slide. We have a well uh, dynamic team. My humble self, that is Mary Okachi, she's a food scientist. That is Oribi Batumo, she's our uh, head of our marketing team, and that's uh, uh, Eugene, our kids. Who is, who is, who is a, a QA and QC uh, expert. Now, we're trying as much as possible 
to, to, to reach out to as many persons as possible. For our projections, in the last couple of months, we've been able, just within our immediate production environment, we've been able to be meeting at least, we started giving out at least 1,500 units of this on a monthly basis. And we're hoping that if you can give us money, by 2018, we can be able to assess, at least we can be able to assess millions of Nigerians and even in the African continent with at least 5, 5 million units. That is by the year 2018. Next slide. Why do we need your money? We need just 4 million naira. The 4 million naira we want to use to get a pickup van. We want an industrial uh, uh, parking and selling machine, bigger generator, a bigger cooler house, and to meet up some NAFTA conditions. Next slide. This is where we're going. We cannot continue to be like this. We are hoping that in the next few years, you will have a, a, a canned package seafood so that we eliminate most of the bottlenecks of preservation and stuff like that. Next slide. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, next up, we will make our compost man. Good day, everyone. I'm Ari Tamalemi, the developer of Postman. Now, Postman is a messaging app that focuses on bulk SMS, but that's not what it does. So, we might ask why bulk SMS? Everybody sends bulk SMS. In a day, I receive more than 10 bulk SMS from different languages. So, what's the current problem? Currently, they are all web based, and the payments method is very rigid. You have to go to a bank to pay for, the, for bulk SMS. Then, when, when you click on your phone, it's not really mobile. And if you want to send message to contacts in your phone, you have to export your number before you put it on the website to send message. So why? Next up. Where does Postman come in? Postman now brings bulk SMS to your phone. Not just that, you can just easily select contacts from your phone and send messages to them. What else? Instead of going to banks to pay, you can use your ATM, you can use the Play Store to pay for this bulk SMS and just sit where you are. Instead of bringing in someone to send your bulk SMS and do it yourself. Now, you ask where is the market? Obviously, everybody, many people send bulk SMS. We have over 50 million Nigerians using smartphones, and all of them are potential users of Postman because everybody is selling something. Now, let's go, let's be specific. You have politicians campaign, change, change, change. Now, I was getting the message last year, change, change, change. It's bulk SMS. You have churches. I get Isaiah and Jeremiah messages every Sunday. It's bulk SMS. <laughs> Businesses, Jumia has been bombarding my, my inbox with Black Friday. Even this place, they've been sending messages throughout the day. So, that, those are potential users of Postman. Then you have celebrities, you have schools, and normal people. Let's think of it. Instead of sending phone a message to a user, you can use this one and send it at very cheap rates to users. Like, you can use it as a normal messaging app and customize it to show any name you want. You can also schedule it. Same way, way what? So you don't forget someone's bed here, and best of Sarah's. And it's always accessible. Next. So, what market strategy are we using to do? Yeah, we have a lot of mouth strategy. For now, that's how I'm growing. I'm telling people, and they're telling other people. And that's how I'm growing. But plans to go into social media and adverts. So, why do I do money? Well, to hire more people. Like I said, I have only on Android because I'm the only developer. I have a web version too. But I plan to go into iOS, Blackberry, even Java phones. So it will be everywhere and accessible to anyone for free. Then improve the service and coverages. Most bulk SMS services in Nigeria just covers Nigeria. They don't cover international customers. And we plan to go into that. Then improve profits. The more you buy, the more you make. That's just the reality of bulk SMS. But what we've done so far, well, I have an app in yeah, Play Store currently. I have a website currently. What we want to achieve is app for iOS, Windows, and Blackberry. The API support, support for enterprise solutions so other services can connect and run our service, run my own digital service. Then support for international numbers. I've seen that before to grow and really support international numbers. Next. So, next. So, this is current, currently the app in Play Store. You can see that. Can check Google and you can search for place and post one on your place on app. Next, and that's the website. Thank you. Thank you, Postman. 
And last but not the least, we will make up on Radio Messenger. My name is Gabriel. Good day, everyone. I'm a designer and uh, founder of Radio Messenger. And before I begin, uh, while most persons are involved with uh, being doctors, lawyers, while some of my colleagues here are solving big problems, at the end of it all, when you finish working, you want to get some rest, some relaxation, and the best alternative is to uh, get entertainment. Either watch comedy or maybe watch some YouTube videos. That's what I'm going to. So the internet is really beautiful because it has made the process of delivering entertainment a lot more easier. And uh, from uh, uh, aggregation, people go to the online to share what's happening, to know what's happening, and to chat. And all these things are better aggregated on social media. That's what they do next. Uh, numbers have been that so many of us go online every day. About 50 million Nigerians go to Facebook. Next slide. But the problem is with all these technologies, people are still bored. They still want more engagement. Next. And the reason for that is because sometimes when you go online, your friends are not there. Sometimes uh, the funny stuff you see there, they are probably old. Or maybe they are too long to read. Uh, maybe YouTube is too slow because of the uh, network. Uh, next. So we thought of a Radio Messenger, a text-based entertainment application. So Radio Messenger is an innovative app for entertainers and public speakers to uh, uh, prepare their acts in a text form, like as if the, uh, the messenger is talking with you. Right, next. Uh, this is a picture of what Radio Messenger is. There's somebody on one side, the entertainer, who is entertaining you in a text-based form. Next. Now, this is a typical joke I, I copied online, but as you can see, it is uh, too long. And uh, you may probably don't have patience to read that next. So it's too long, you don't want to read. But this is how Radio Messenger presents this same joke. Next slide. Next, please. This is a joke. Uh, the flow is a conversation between uh, one Mr. John and V Mobile. Next. Uh, Mr. John actually bought internet a uh, subscription. And he's chatting with it. So John says, hello, my internet is not working properly. This is a comedian talking to you on Radio Messenger. And uh, Viva said, okay, uh, you do as I say, double click on my computer on your desktop. Then John said, uh, I can't see your computer. Then next, Viva said, click on my computer on your computer. And John said, how can I click on your computer in my computer? Then Viva said, listen, John. There is an icon called my computer, click on it. And John said, oh my God, what is your computer doing in my computer? And people said, mm, double click on my computer. Then John said, on which icon do I have to double click? And people by reply said, my computer. And John got provoked and said, oh my God, where is your office? Let me come and click on your computer. So it's a text-based entertainment that after all your work, you can use and relax, which sort of define our minimum viable product, which is comic relief and inspiration. Next. And our target users are the comedians, the pastors, and the life coaches. <coughs> Next slide. Our revenue model is a premium model for comedians who want to uh, probably do these things for some money. But for those who want to do it for free, they can do. Then we can also support them with uh, support that with the uh, advert. We also have provision for a sponsored model. Next. Uh, and we need funding. Next, for distance, we want to complete development. We have done that. If you go to our website, you're going to fi find what we've done so far radiomessenger.com. Next, and this is our founding team myself, a designer, a developer, and the rest of the team. Uh, I believe that is all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Radio Messenger. That brings uh, us to the end of the presentation. But before we leave, we'd like to. Um, Go to the judges if you have any questions for all of them or any of them. How many questions? One. <laughs> so I want to apologize uh, because I think they should have allowed me to come and ask you these questions. I'm always very pragmatic about things. So let me just 
tell you what I know today. Does that work for you? Let me share with you my own notes, right? On my own. So first of all, I don't know, what's the name of the first one? Hoja. Okay. So um, you, you haven't said how big the market is. You didn't say, you said that there are millions. So the, the current data says that um, we've been working on the assumption that there are 300 million, the size of the middle, market, the, um, the middle class in Africa is 300 million. 300 million, right? But it's been resized, it's been rebased to 18 million. 18, from 300 million to 18. So it's going to shrink your market size as well. So it'll be interesting to understand who you expect. I think you said you want this to go to people who are busy. So what is the number of people who are busy? And I mean, how are you going to, how are you going to keep this business, um, how are you going to scale this business with the ability of other people to also provide this service? Because your service isn't, isn't necessarily unique. Um, if you look at the retail, the way that retail is growing across the market, spa is going to be in every neighborhood. And it's going to completely, just like Walmart did to neighborhood stores, spa is going to put every, it's going to put all the markets, uh, all the current markets and the current distribution systems for retail. Um, it's going to fundamentally change that with the mall structure. So when you've got a mall right next to you, then why would anybody be coming to you to go and deliver anything? Why would people want to connect to you and use your service when you have access to variety in your neighborhood? Do you understand my you understand what I'm saying? So I, I think I don't necessarily I don't know if you have the answers, but I'm I'm concerned about the ability of your business to actually scale. And if it's going to last, because there's aggressive competition, hundreds of millions of dollars coming into the market to actually do what you're trying to do. And if I had advice, I would say to you that you should um, you should forget about the about that aspect and just build a logistics company. There will, there will always be a need for a logistics company that delivers specialty items like food. And you're better off becoming that company than you are trying to be the other. That's my own, my feedback. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know if you have time for feedback. Can I just, do you want me to give feedback or I can just run to the others? Okay, uh, concerning uh, how we want to scale and how we want to sustain, uh, as we're relying on uh, our previous experience in the previous startup, we realized that uh, for a small startup to actually scale to a Unicorn, you have to continue to work hard and innovate and do some things better. When you get feedback from users, users, user impression, there are so many uh, marketplaces out there that. Uh, so I have money to give. I have money, and I have money to give you, and I won't give you the money. If I didn't get the question. I have money to give, and I won't give you the money because you don't. You are not able to answer this question of how you scale. How many? How big is your market? And how are you going to go from 10 deliveries to, you said you have 100, you know, 101 and 1,000 of the other. You said you had, you had sellers, you had people sellers and you had buyers. How are you going to scale to make this work? Because it's about scale, this is a volume business. Do you understand? It's a volume business, isn't it? So how are you going to scale it? You haven't answered. We have 1,000 plus. Users. How many do you need to break even? We need uh, 24 million. And 1, 000, 24 million, yes. To break even. Uh, 1,000 plus users came from refined. 24 million users, buyers, or 24 million deliveries? Uh, no, 24 million users with uh, about 10% of them ordering monthly. Then we'll be able to scale over time. Then, uh, so uh, that's 210% of. 24 million is, exactly. is 2.4 million. Exactly. So you want 2.4 million transactions a month. Exactly. At a minimum. I think at, at a minimum, you want 2.4 million transactions. Exactly. A month. That is by 2020. Because how, we have how many I kind of feel that rather than help us post war, we need to put, we need to find a way to block the posts that are coming. And so if you spend more time on that, you could have a killer app, right? So I don't I don't I don't really want to like that. Just like that. Um, on the on the on the radio messenger, I, I really didn't get into the story. Unfortunately, I wasn't watching the I wasn't watching the screen. It's radio messenger, right? Radio messenger. Right? So I, I didn't really get what it was, but I, I I'm I'm glad that the audience laughed. 
because I was having a tough time keeping up with you, but if they laughed, then maybe there's a product. So you have to think about that. I, I wonder how you're going to, the question that came to me was, how are you going to protect this idea? Because what you're, what you're providing is a service, what you're, what you're describing is something that somebody else can, can look at and recreate. So what makes yours so unique? That allows an investor to be safe, that if I put in money here, in the long term, it's going to come back out. You, you wouldn't see one million copycat kind of application. And so if, if you had a joke builder, I'd be very happy with you. If you came up with something that could throw 20 different things together and they come out with a unique joke, I think all the entertainers would, would come to you because that would give them initial material they can then turn into something else. And you can focus on building an algorithm that takes those takes content from anywhere, scrambles it, and comes up with a new joke. Maybe that's what we find. So I don't know, but you know, that's just some ideas. That's that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let um, me to call to give you numbers. Um, picture one. Um, I like the fact that you were you could identify your target market. Talk about busy people, the working class, and the um, upper middle class and the middle class. You know what? What I want to see is um, you give us numbers as to how many people from that demographic and what percentage of that market you're looking at capturing. Because I'm sure you know that um, planning to capture the entire market is not possible. Then um, talking about going from Lagos to the south, south and other places, um, I think it's I think we just have to learn to walk before we run. You know, so you have to focus on your initial area of market, you know, and um, pay a lot of attention, learn your mistakes there before you talk about scaling. You know, that would help. Then I didn't hear traction where you're coming from, you know, in terms of numbers and everything. Traction, you know, you didn't talk about traction, so that's something I'll convince an investor. You want to say something? I mean, I was convinced, you know, based on that. So I want you to be specific when it comes to traction, you know, where you're coming from. Then, if we want to invest in your idea or in your product, you know, let's want, let's understand, let's also be sure of the ROI, the return on investment. You know, so that's it. Um, Digital two, the um, idea of seafood. Are you just selling one product or other forms of seafood? Okay, okay, um, because of time, I just want me. Um, um, one of the things we want to say is expiry date and everything, so we're sure of safety and hygiene here. You know, expiry dates and things like that, so we're sure of. Um, Hygiene. We are sure that you have uh, met the regulatory body's um, requirements, so you have complied with that. You know, so so you don't invest uh, midway. You know, now that comes and your money is hanging and you're trying to sort out things. So those are some of the things we want to hear that you you tidy that part of it. Um, the other side is uh, numbers too. You know, you didn't give numbers, so that's it. Then um, the postmaster, picture three. The, the, the big question is, how do we make money from this? You know, good idea, bad idea, that's not it, but how do we make money from it? You know, that goes to the entertainer too, you know. How, what are the numbers there? That's the thing that will convince us. Because of lack of time, I think we spoke yesterday and um, we'll continue that conversation offline so that we can move on to the next um, session here. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, thank you very much to all the pictures, Hoja, Radio Messenger, uh, Rotsajit, and uh, Postman. Thank you very much. I will also let the judges leave and uh,